I just want to thank our sponsor, ArtGrid, for helping me escape this cold Finnish winter. And enjoy the sunshine and warmth of LA. Today, I thought in this episode I would share you guys what's in my camera bag 2022 because, well, let's just say in 2021 it didn't change very much. But in 2022, my bag has completely changed. So let's jump into the studio and let me show you the tour of the camera bag I took for this trip. So I haven't dared to do a what's in my camera bag video for a long time because the truth is nothing's really changed in my camera bag until this year. You see, in the past year, I kind of held off on investing in more gear, but this year, since I've gone full-time into YouTube content creation, I've decided to invest more into gear to create better content, and so here it is. This is the PGY Tech One Mo 25 liter backpack. I really like it, it's worked for me well, and there has been a lot of changes this year. Let's start with camera bodies. First, we have the Sony A7S III, which is my main B-roll epic film camera that I'm using to shoot footage with and take photos with. Then I have my more fun vlogging, take with me wherever I kind of go camera, the Sony ZV-1 with, if you can see, I got this Alonzi wide-angle lens. This has been a really fun setup and I've really enjoyed vlogging with this camera. Then for lenses, I haven't bought all these lenses. I've actually bought one of the lenses, but Sony was kind enough to borrow and lend me a lot of these lenses to test out. So right now in the arsenal, I have the Sony 24 millimeter lens. This is great for that nice bokeh with wide shots, taking portraits, getting the epic B-roll. Then I have the 50 mil 1.2, which is just a beautiful piece of glass you get really nice bokeh and that nice compression when you're taking portraits. Really enjoyed this lens. Shot with that lens a few times last year with my brother Maddie. And then the Power Horse lens, the 16 to 35 G Master. So this is what I'm using whenever I'm vlogging with the Sony A7S III. So this is the perfect setup for that. And then when we want those tighter shots, I have the 7200. I don't use this too often, but sometimes when you want to get some nice details for landscapes or if you want that really compressed look when you're doing portraits of someone, you know, to get the background feel a lot closer, then the 7200 is great. And I'm excited to be using this lens while in California because I think we're going to be able to get some epic portraits of Van and I. Then for sound, we are using the Sony microphone. This one's great because it's so small and you attach it straight to the hot shoe where it gets its power source, meaning you'll never have a microphone run out of battery, and it always will be on. So really enjoy this lens. It's so small. When you had the R5 with the Rode video mic, the setup became huge, especially when you had the Gorillapod. But this little guy on top of this, it's a pretty small little setup for vlogging, so I enjoy that. Then we have the Manfrotto Pixel Clip. This is what I'm using with the Sony ZV-1. I really like this one. It's so easy to attach to it. Easy with the button just to turn and get the right angle. And then if you want to be holding a vlog, you can pull it like this. But then if you want to set it down, just pull it the three legs quickly and it's nice and sturdy. I really like this. If you're interested in any of these products, I will link them below in the description. So check them out. And if you want to support my channel by using the links in my description, uh, it does help me out financially. So thank you very much. Um, if I'm vlogging with the Sony a7 III, I got a little bit of a bigger guy, so this is the Joby Gorilla Pod, which we all know. It's a love-hate relationship with this guy, but still haven't found a better solution than that. Then we have the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro ND filters. I might use this if it's a really bright day, but most of the time I'm not using this if I'm being honest. Then we have action cameras. This guy never gets old. It's the Insta360 1X2. I love this camera if you're filming shots of yourself or you just want to get into unique spots that you just could not get with this one. Really excited to use this camera on the trip, you know, throwing out the window, getting some nice shots of the car. This is going to be good on this trip. Then we have uh, storage. 
I'm using the SanDisk Extreme Pros. This is more just like backup because I have now the new M1 MacBook Pro, so I'm not gonna need it very much. But just in case the MacBook Pro does get filled up, I have these to store footage on while I'm traveling. Then the newest addition to the bag, I actually went literally just yesterday to the store and brought my EOS R and our old 1635 lens. And I said, here, take these. Can I grab this drone with those? So I got the Air 2S and comboed with the controller screen. I got this one because sometimes it's so finicky having your iPhone connected to it. Now it's all in one. So I'm really excited to get some epic drone footage while we're in California. And along with that, I have not only one battery on the drone, but I also have three other extra batteries. So I don't think we're gonna run out of battery while we're on this trip. Then to edit on the road, in here we've got this nice pouch that fits my 15 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Really excited to be traveling with this laptop on the road and just being able to use this long lasting battery to be editing in the car, the plane, the trains, because that's always where I'm the most productive. I try to film as much as I can while we're traveling, but then I try to edit as much as possible whenever I'm on a train or plane or somewhere just sitting for a long time where I wouldn't be able to do anything else anyway. So this guy is coming on the trip. So yeah, I can wholeheartedly say that the 2022 camera bag setup has completely changed. I think the only things that have stayed the same is the Pixel Clip and the Joby Grillo Pod. But everything else is new for this year, and I'm excited about that. Can these views get any more epic? I don't know why people from LA wouldn't start their morning every single day here from Griffith Observatory. This place is the bomb. Look, there's the observatory right there. So some of you guys are probably wondering, how did we end up in LA and why are we here? Well, if any of you guys have been following our stories or my latest video, let's just say that travel hasn't been so easy this year. Uh, we got COVID earlier this year in January, and because I got COVID on a lot of PCR tests, it'll show up positive for a while, meaning I haven't been able to travel to countries where you require PCR, meaning I couldn't go to Saudi Arabia and we couldn't go to Thailand. So then we thought about all these places that you could travel to with antigen tests because I knew that I have passed negative on that one when I went to Sweden. So we were looking at countries like Mexico, Costa Rica, we were thinking of going to Maui, and always there was something a little bit wrong with the trip. The flights were just way too long, like 30 hours, three stops, or because we were booking so last minute, all the hotels were booked or they're just really crazy expensive. And we were so close to giving up until we thought, why not go to LA? And all of a sudden I looked flights from Helsinki to LA and I found straight flights, one flight, 10 and a half hours, which is long, but it's amazing that you don't have to do any connections and it's just, jump on the plane in Helsinki and land in LA. So here we are, we literally booked these flights on Sunday and we got here on Wednesday. So we didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this trip. Speaking of traveling and with all the difficulties that we're experiencing right now with COVID and restrictions and PCR tests, I thought this would be the perfect segue into this episode's sponsor and that's ArtGrid. ArtGrid is a stock footage website service where you can download unlimited amounts of stock footage from all around the world filmed by some of the best filmmakers ever. They're a lot better than I am. I can admit that. With travel being so difficult right now, it's not easy for a filmmaker or editor to just jump on a plane and go somewhere and get the footage that you need. It actually might just not be possible. But with a service like ArtGrid, you literally have at the tip of your fingers access to clips filmed all around the world, which can allow you to make an amazing final product for your videos. Another thing that makes ArtGrid, I think one step better than all the other stock footage websites is that they're always filming in sequences. A lot of times you might find one good clip on a stock footage site, but you can't really make a project with just one clip. You need a sequence in order to tell a story. And that's what they do at ArtGrid. They always film everything in sequences, meaning you have three, four, five, ten clips that you can download from that one sequence, so you can actually tell the story that you want to tell with your project. So if you guys want to check out ArtGrid, you can use the link in my description and you'll get two months free with the yearly subscription. All right, let's go enjoy some LA. Who also thinks that it should be time for me to take off the beanie and jacket? I literally left these clothes on just for me to do that little jump shot in the beginning of the introduction. I've been wearing these clothes since the beginning of the trip. So it's time to put on some shorts and t-shirt and enjoy California. How are you enjoying the California lifestyles? Ah, oh, I'm so alive. Should we move here? We're gonna move here. 
to the to the hills. On this valley. Oh gosh, I think we need to make more money to move the bill. <laughs> <laughs>